Good morning, everybody. Enter the stars. And no fear. No fear. This is all about understanding the truth. We are part of Bible prophecy, part of the end times, part of the manifestation of all of the different prophecies in the Bible. This is it. This is the increase in knowledge. This is the nothing that is hidden will remain hidden. All will be revealed in the last days. These are exciting times, you guys. One of you have, has asked me to do a video trying to sum it all up, explaining the primer, explaining all of the different things that we've discovered in one short video, and I'm going to do that for you guys today. So here we go. What we've identified is that these elite use numbers. They also use mirrors of those numbers. They also use the calendar, and I'll go step by step and try to explain exactly what is going on here. First of all, the Egyptians were the first on this planet. They came out of the tribe of Mizraim. Mizraim was the son of Ham. And you'll notice that they use Ham often as a symbol because that is their symbol. Ham. Ham, his son was cursed. Canaan was the brother of Mizraim. I believe that all the sons of Ham from the mother that they had could have been and most likely were Nephilim. We followed the Nephilim bloodline out of Canaan and we saw that all of the tribes that the Israelites fought were from the tribe of Canaan, the cursed tribe, the Philistines, the Amorites, the Hittites, all of these could be traced back and that's why God had the Israelites wage genocide on these fallen ones. There are many references of giants in the Bible. You're probably wondering why I'm going back so far in history. It's because we need to cover this one more time. This is the summation of all the work that we've done and everything that we've found. Now these are critical times and a deception is afoot. A deception is afoot to convince you that the ancient Egyptians were the ones who created the original Jesus Christ story and that all religions sprung from this Christ story. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the opposite is true. And I'll show you that they use the mirrors to deceive you. It is a literal hall of mirrors. Just like Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. When he's in the hall of mirrors and he cannot find the evil. That is what's going on here. And because Satan wants to be like the Most High. He can't help himself but to copy God. And to tell his prophets, the actors, his plans before he does them. And so we live in a hall of mirrors and a deception is afoot. The deception of trying to be like the Most High. And Satan telling his prophets what he will do before he does it. But most importantly, he is trying to say that he is the Son God, is the Son of Man, God's Son. And he's trying to take on that role so that you will think that Jesus is a myth. Do not fall for the deception. I have seen Christ in my life, as many as of you have as well. We have seen the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Even if you have not seen it other places in your life, simply coming to this channel is a testament. It is a testimony. It is a witness to the power of synchronicity and the Holy Spirit. The miracles that each of us has experienced each and every day on this channel the synchronicities of life and events when you guys leave this channel you come back and you say wow this happened to me that directly related to what we were talking about those are no accidents you guys it's god the echo of god echoing throughout this reality and into your life and this is what we have to stand against the deception in these last days because satan is coming fast and furious, and he controls history and your perception of it. So where do we go now? Let's get into some of the primers and what all this stuff means. So from the Egyptians came the Romans. The Roman Empire was the pharaonic bloodline. It was the enmity, the seed against which they would fight Jesus' bloodline and his seed 
It is the enmity of Genesis prophesied in the Bible. And Caesar was the one who had Jesus crucified. Caesar is was the Pharaoh. Why do I say this? Because this goes back so far, you guys. In the ancient Roman holidays we've identified now are still being celebrated today in our modern culture. We identified Lupercalia. We identified Liberalia. We identified Emolk. We identified Sawin. All of these point back to the ancient Roman holidays. They've been repackaged and resurfaced and renamed through the Catholic Church to be more palatable to the Christians. And in that process, we have lost what these things actually mean. They all involve the serpent and the mixing of the serpent seed with our seed. They all involve elements of dust, the dust of the earth, the curse. Can't you see it? It is clear as day to me. My job now is to convince you of the truth. So what have they done? They use mirrors. So for every number, there is a mirror to that number. Okay, we've identified that they go back and forth between the Roman calendar, the Julian calendar, and then the current modern Gregorian calendar. So when you look on the Gregorian calendar, you have to check the translation to the Julian calendar, and also you have to consider the Roman calendar. And when you overlay all three of those calendars, which I've done, you find patterns, distinct patterns, irrefutable patterns, crossing many movies, many platforms, commercials, television. It is the primer by which we can decode our reality, the reality that has been created for us by our slave masters. The only way out of the cube is Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to show you a few simple tools that I use to that reveal these things, okay? Now, first before I do that, Obama is Caesar. Caesar was assassinated in 44 BC and Obama is the 44th president. He has clearly shown us that he has recognized at least several of the Roman festivals. Lupercalia on the BuzzFeed video, we very clearly showed the occult symbolism and communications that were in that BuzzFeed for the deadline of Obamacare. And he is also following each one of these ancient Roman festivals. Now this is a tool I use, it's called the Stephen Morse Calendar Converter. And as you can see here, we have a way to switch back and forth from Gregorian to Julian. And I do both. We also know that the Roman calendar, October is the 8th month instead of the 10th month. They had a different calendar, so we can overlay that calendar as well. We know now that 88 represents the cube time. It represents infinity being locked in the sine wave. The sine wave is a looks like a wave in the ocean, but what it represents is time. We also know that the broken infinity symbol is the fish. So if you take an infinity symbol and you cut one end out of it and open it, it becomes the fish. It becomes Jesus Christ, the only one who can break the curse of infinity. Now we're going to talk a little bit about anti-dates. I know this can get confusing but actually it's really simple. For every date on the calendar there is an anti-date and I like to use this one as an example because this is the birthday of the Queen of England who just so happens to be 88 years old. April 21st and when you look at April 21st, it is the 111th day of the year. So how do we find the anti-date of April 21st? We simply find 
the day of the year that has 111 days left until the end of the year. And what date is that? The answer is September 11th. And so yes, in fact, September 11th is the anti-date of April 21st, the Queen of England's birthday, who just so happens to be 88 years old this year. So what is the purpose of looking at all of these dates and anti-dates and calendar conversions? Because that is where I found the hidden pattern of our slave masters, locking us into patterns of sin through their secret messaging and slowly brainwashing us into not believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. That is where the hidden primer is. It is in these numbers, and once you learn to see the primer, you are excused from the magic because it has been revealed to you, and the truth has then set you free because you see the darkness all around you, and you understand that the only hope, the only hope is Jesus Christ. You get it. Otherwise, you are a frog in boiling water, slowly cooking to death not understanding what you need to do in your life to make the changes. You become a slave to these people. You fall into their patterns of living, their patterns of reality, their patterns of brainwashing, and you believe that everything around you is inert and harmless when in actuality, the only refuge we have is nature of which they are trying to systematically destroy and destroy your connection with it because that is the last semblance of God that we have on this planet. It is insidious and it is pure evil and eventually this, the deception will come and you will need to know, you will need to know in your heart not to look back like Lot's wife and turn to a pillar of salt. And once you start to understand what these numbers mean to these people. The evil is revealed in all of pop culture and everything around you. And one of the subscribers sent this to me. Fonzie's Baptism, the 88th episode on March 29th, 1977. 5777 is the Hebrew year of Obama's last year of his presidency. March 29th is the 88th day of the year, the day Jesus Christ was crucified in 36 AD. Fonzie's baptism is a knock on Jesus Christ. Baptism was Jesus' goal it, during his ministry. And Fonzie represents being cool while being saved. This is a slow, insidious way to pull you away from a godly life. Throwing out characters like this to make it okay to womanize and be cool and have a chip on your shoulder. And Jesus did not have a chip on his shoulder, you guys. This is how they do it. And now that you have the keys to the mansion, you will start to see these patterns over and over again. Now. Our entire reality is governed by mathematics. And who were the masters of mathematics? The Egyptians. But there was someone greater who created the mathematics. They were simply sharing with us the secrets of heaven. Heaven is the place where all of this came from. But the evil one uses it to keep you asleep and in darkness. But we are revealing it to you today so that you can understand. We have seen the numbers imprinted on our reality. So they want to bring back Rome and they want to bring back Egypt here in America. And that is exactly what's going on. When you look at the footprint of the World Trade Center, it is the three pyramids. And everything from this point forward will be a duplicate story because there is nothing new under the sun. So you can open up your Bible right now and look at ancient Egypt and how God called his people out of the wilderness and how he helped us but only if we have faith and only if we love him and acknowledge 
Jesus Christ. Take care and be safe, you guys.